Yeah, it's Black Grievance Month, otherwise known as Black History Month, but that's the that's the fake, illegitimate title as far as I know, because we all know that Black History Month isn't there to actually celebrate any form of real history. It's there to complain about white people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Realistically speaking, <laughs> like every, everything that... Wait, what even is the point? Like, if I, I don't want to be that guy that just sits there and is like, yeah, you know, the left are retarded because, you know, they always are. But sincerely, if you wanted to still man the position of black history, and the argument is like, oh, black people are underrepresented in the history books, therefore we want to have a special month where we elevate it. Well, it's also you call the it reason, black history. It's also the reason why they've been disproportionately underrepresented in history books is because, white man. because they were erased from history. <laughs> Because they was kangs, they was pharaohs, and sh- you know, yeah, yeah. That's 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 how it goes. To be fair, my favorite movie is Zulu, and they make up the majority of the cast in that. It was that's a very forward-thinking it? film. But no one arguing for Black History Month would ever be like, "Oh, Zulu." It's <laughs> never you... that. It's always some black guy you've never heard of who, trust me, bro, invented like the vacuum cleaner. And, and you then go you check are... it; it's never true. No, yeah, I saw a video that was some random black woman on TikTok going through. Oh, I was trying to live my life without using inventions created by black people. I just couldn't do anything. Yeah, I went to go and vacuum my house. Oh, no, couldn't do it. And then somebody just very quickly, because she was just flashing up patents that had been put forward in the, the 1800s by black Americans. And uh, the guy just looked into it. It was like, no, there was a guy who patented this invention 50 years before. There was another one who did the same thing 60 years before. Every single one of them was just a guy who was black at some point put a patent in. That's rough. Yeah, every single one of your claims just bunk. Well, yeah, obviously. That's what these people do. They just go, oh, there's a nice history you've got there. I'll take that. Stonehenge, nice monuments there. Must have been me. These people, they can't... These activists, they're not able to like look at history and be able to... Right, you, you leave Tariq Nasheed out of this. He's a good man. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm, bra- I'm book-breaking him <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> It's like they can't look at any aspect of history and be able to empathize with it or appreciate it unless the people who are directly involved share their skin color. It's a very strange way of looking at history, but you know that's that's how it goes. And on that, uh, Labour Party obviously decided Hello. the first thing that they wanted to do this month was celebrate that Black History is British history, and there was an interesting. I don't know if they've mentioned this in anything else before. If if not, then this was quite a an abrupt announcement of it. Because at the end of here, they do all of the, oh, inequality, oh, we need to destroy inequity, we need to make everything more equal. Also, to do that, we'll introduce a race equality act to tackle structural inequalities. Don't don't we already have one? Um, I mean, there's the Equality Act, and that's basically what that is, because it has protected characteristics. And that That was built upon the Race Equality Act, the Gender Equality Act, and I believe there there was one more as well, but I forget. Oh, there's there's lots of them. There's public orders where no, you... but the Equality Act was an amalgamation. So yes, we did have one. We um, did have one, and then we amalgamated them all into the Equality Act, which is a, a terrible, terrible piece of law. And then what happened was, it was somehow, somehow, despite making it illegal for people to have differences, people still <laughs> were different from one another <laughs> and behaved in different ways. And could you even imagine it had different outcomes from their different behaviour? Yes, of course. Then. Disgusting. <laughs> so, Sincerely, yeah. that's how these, pe- these people actually think, though. Yeah, so what we need is another race equality act to replace... But th- what's going on? What's going on, Labour? What will this be? Will this just be... If I'm, Do I need to wear an armband? Is that what this will end up as being? I mean, African-coloured armbands. Uh, yeah, pan-African armbands. Is that what I'm going to have to do? You've not announced anything regarding what this will actually, you know, entail beyond just saying the Race Equality Act, which I can just assume that it means that I, n- I have to give up 50% of my income to my local black charity or my local black activist or Dawn Butler, who's also involved in this, promoting this. We need to salute our sisters. Keir Starmer posted the same thing. Black Brit history is British history. Labour government will introduce a Race Equality Act. Now, I've spoken quite a lot recently over the fact that Labour had been doing quite an effective job given how terrible the Tories are pivoting their rhetoric to try and appeal more to the old working class where they're saying that we're going to be tough on immigration, we're going to get rid of the madness. Finally, Keir Starmer is here so that we can end the far left madness that Labour had descended into and return to a a sensible centre 
And then he comes out with nonsense like this. And then also at the same time, I believe a few weeks ago, announced that he, if Labour get into power, they will be taking on the, um, the targets and quotas for refugees that the EU sets, which was one of the things that we left the EU to avoid doing in the first place. Why would you, why would you do that? Because you don't want to win elections, Dan. Evidently, all of the things that Labour seemed to be learning and how to promote themselves, they've immediately thrown all of that in the bin and just gone, yes, we'll have the literal racism act, the I hate Mawaiti act. <laughs> do, 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 you think, do you think this is the political equivalent of like the pull a pig competition? It's Because it, it, it almost seems like, I mean, conservatives have tried so hard to lose this election. Yes. And are, and are continuing to try so hard to lose. Do you think Labour are like playing a game with themselves? Let's see how much we can try and lose the election and still win by or something like I, that. I think that might be what's going on. I think what's happening is, obviously, we're getting into election season, so Conservatives are throwing out the red meat. Suella Braverman comes out saying... They're also proposing a racism act, but yeah, yeah, different Multiculturalism reasons. has failed. <laughs> all of this. And uh, if imagine it's a foot race, okay? And they're coming yeah. up to the final line and Labour has started to really outpace Conservatives yeah. in the last few metres. And then, as soon as he gets to the finish line, they've got the ribbon there. Instead of crossing the line, Labour decides to kneel down and grot themselves <laughs> with the ribbon. That seems to be what's happening here. To be fair, if the, if, if the uniparty thing is really true, you don't actually want to beat your opposition by too much because you, you want a nice, friendly opposition. If... if Conservatives get drubbed in the way that some of the polls suggest and go down to about 40 seats. You know, they're not going to be there much longer. But I think, I think the problem with the Uniparty is that we've seen from 2019 that even if you have a ridiculous majority in Parliament, you still just won't do anything that's outside of the, mm. the Overton window paradigm framework that you exist within. Because Conservatives, mm. we always go on about it. They've had so long to do all of this stuff that would have been good for the country roll back on immigration, actually secure the borders against illegal migration, um, pull back some of these laws like the Communications Act, maybe take away Ofcom uh, or some of their regulatory power, all this stuff that Tony Blair implemented. And they've just made it stronger and stronger and stronger. And then with Ofcom, they go, oh, we'll make it even stronger with the online So, so Tories winning that 80-seat majority was one of the worst things that ever happened to them because all of a sudden they got no excuses. It's like, oh, you can do everything that you've said you're going to do. Well, Oops. Yep. Callum, what were you laughing at? I can't tell you because it's <laughs> it's too spicy. It's from the chat. <laughs> I screenshotted it though, so I'll, I'll put yeah, it. Yeah, you'll, you'll send that to me afterwards. So. But I do kind of like this. I don't know if we can get this back on screen because I just I love the idea that he's sitting there being like, "Black history is British history." Just that phraseology, I, I find hilarious because it's so imperialistic. Mm. Where it's just like, "Yes, Britain includes all of Sub-Saharan Africa, yes. the Caribbean." Well, there, I was bringing back say, boys. I was going to say the black history that they want to highlight isn't, let's say, the most honest portrayal of Britain's history with, uh, with black sure. people in the past. I mean, for one, they completely ignore any reference to uh, blockading the transatlantic slave trade, paying off the slaveholders so that we could free all of the slaves that were part of the empire, et cetera, et cetera. They don't want to pay any attention to that sort of stuff. No, they want to turn around and say Stonehenge was built by Kangs. Suleiman. He was a Moor. Yes. Septimius Severus. Uh, uh, not British, not black. In fact, North African, probably Mediterranean, black. Have you not seen this? Was he? The, I can't remember which one he was. Septimius Severus, I believe, was the Roman emperor who came over here and, and actually lived okay, in great. England yeah. for a little bit when they were doing the conquest. The emperor of Rome was black, trust me. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> Why? <Okay. laughs> Why? Well, because in some old pictures of him, he was depicted as having a quite brownish bronze skin tone, which... If you, uh, I mean, I can highlight it here. I've seen an Italian. There's, there's an excellent video recently released for Black History Month, Black Grievance Month, by Survive the Drive, who we had on a few weeks ago. We spoke to Bo, very good video, you should check it out, uh, where he debunked a few of these ones because there's a list that you can find online of 100 greatest isn't, black Britons. Isn't Anne Boleyn black now? I, I remember so there was a BBC series in which, in which we found that out. They you, know tried... you know what's really annoying, though? Is there were, I think it was some green text or something a while back, where someone really pointed out the difference between right and left-wing thinking in terms of the culture war, right. which is that you'll find like left-wing, let's say normies as well, will get their viewpoints 
not from history or facts or data, but instead from the movies they watch. Yeah. So sincerely, I reckon if you did a poll, there probably is a significant amount of the American population. I'm just saying that because they're slightly removed because they don't know about the royal family as well, who probably think Anne Boleyn was black. No, you're right. I'm just yeah. saying. I know it's going to be like, I don't know, 12% or something, but yeah. you know, Americans, when polled, I think, what did they believe? They believe like 20% of America was transgender. They Do you remember that, that Yeah, I remember it. I've got, I've got that link somewhere, but they believed that, I think they thought that America's population was 40% black. <laughs> when it's <laughs> yeah, quite, got that one. <laughs> quite, quite notoriously, it's um, it's twelve percent or thirteen. To be fair, if you only watched the advert, you would adverts, you would come to the conclusion that every family in Britain consists of a black father and a, and a white mum. Yes, fiction actually defines what people believe. Well, yeah, no. Uh, for, for most people, history is manufactured for them by Hollywood. You're mm. you're absolutely right there, and it is quite distressing, given that I don't trust Hollywood to depict these things accurately. I know. Oh, they, they only lie up front. <laughs> yeah, they only lie about everything. They only try and tell me that the Vikings was black, actually. I remember when Tariq Nasheed tried to claim that the, the Japanese were black because they're descendants of Ethiopians. What? Do you not know about this? No, I've de- okay. I'm, I'm not check check much, on that. I'm not as much of a Tariq scholar. As I love you are. Okay, for people who don't know, Tariq Nasheed is this black nationalist who like takes this to its logical he's a, conclusion. He's a foundational black American. In which he, he argues that basically. You know how the Nazis would argue that basically every big historical event, the Greeks, the Romans, is right. more true Aryans, and they right. try and prove this like pseudoscience. He's the same thing, but for the black race. So literally okay. all civilizations that built anything were black. The Chinese were black. Japanese, black. Right. But then obviously you have to kind of take on the atrocities, presumably, as well. No, no, they, they were just... They, they became white at that moment. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> when the white people invaded. And the rape of Nam King, the Jap, became black. <laughs> Sorry, it became white. Yeah, it became white. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> because they were black all along. They were Ethiopian. Trust me, it's a very serious movement, Black History Month. Is... I'm, I'm tempted to watch it now, some of his stuff, just to see how he hangs it I, together. I, I'm aware that he has a full documentary series, which I think is still ongoing. I think he's doing right. installments of it, where it's about, <laughs> about book-breaking. <laughs> Yeah. Well, not the bug breaking one. Yeah, I think he's uh, still doing enough. installments of that. I don't. I don't know. I'm not a scholar of Tariq Nasheed's work. Like, but he's but he's the guy who takes it to its ultimate conclusion, which you can like you can see elements there. I mean, in the examples you're giving, where they'll just jump to. I mean, like Survivor Jai makes a great point with that BBC video as well. There from Horror History. Oh yeah. Well, they'll just jump to like random figures and be like, yeah, there was black. Why? Uh-huh. They'll also and, just and Tariq just does the same, but for entire civilizations. Well, they'll they'll, they'll also just co-opt the entirety of North Africa as well. If anyone was born in any part of Africa at any point, that means they're sub-Saharan African black. Oh, like the uh, the Cleopatra thing. Yeah, like the, the Cleopatra I mean, thing. Despite you the could make she... a possible argument for Cleopatra. Not a good one, but you could make a possible she argument. She was out. She was Greek. Well, because it was so long ago that we don't know for absolutely certain. Got it just DNA. seems quite improbable. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'm pretty certain. I thought that, we just had drawings. I mean, she was mummified, right? I don't know. So I'm pushy. I'm pretty. Um, I'm pretty. Uh, I think. I think the older Egyptians did that. No, no. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty certain that we've done reconstructions of what she would have looked like, and she would have just been a quite pretty young white girl with ginger hair. Does Does DNA tell you whether you would or not? You don't, You don't know if they're pretty from the DNA, do you? Wait, it's not that. What, well, you can do well if you've got. Sorry, if you've got ideas. <laughs> right. Well, if you've got the skull what? of somebody, for instance, okay. then uh. you use those to depict oh, okay. a very pretty accurate um, facial reconstruction. Okay, somebody. yeah, okay. Oh, but oh, that's not that's not the DNA. That, that's that's the skull and stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. when you've got okay. that kind of access to those. Um, uh, okay. uh, remains, then you're able to do those sorts of things. And right. Okay. If I've got any of this wrong in the comments, uh, please correct yes. me because just, just, I don't claim to be an expert on this. I'm sure Survive the Jive will be. Yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure he will. Do, if do you want DNA to know about testers this, now in the hot or not scale? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Can you imagine doing sure your 23 and me. To make an investment. No, but sincerely, like if you did your 23 and me and at the bottom it just said not hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I did the ancestry test as we were talking about before we went on and it does DNA traits where it gives you quite a good breakdown of where your DNA like pushes you uh, personality wise obviously it's not always going to be but things like crime or <laughs> no no it doesn't give that kind of breakdown Bombings. but for me for instance there was a, a trait 100%. for 
There was, there was, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not Irish at all. Actually, um, there was a treat for picky eating, and I was all the way in very picky eater, which was very, very accurate. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, anybody yeah. who's met me in real life knows that I'm a terrible picky eater. So it is quite accurate with those sorts of things. I knew a guy once who would only eat food if it was white. Like egg, <laughs> like, sorry, not, not even like egg, egg whites. So, no, yeah, egg whites, rice, no yolk. white bread. Yeah, not oh, okay. even the yolk. He wasn't out. like some deep racist from the south or something. No, no, he wasn't only actually. White, he, was white, quite, he was quite, white, he was quite, he was quite white, woke. Poorly cooked chicken, like yeah. boiled chicken. Yeah. Okay. That's I, I, very could, I could never understand that, but there was it was his thing. What happened to him? What caused such a thing? Even I'm not that. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's, I'm I'm terrible. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about Black History Month, I'm sure, at some yeah. point in, in this. We went sideways. Uh, yeah, uh, Sadiq Khan posted a video talking about Black History Month and Black Londoners, and he repeated that old myth, the classic statement that, oh, actually, Windrush came over here so they could help rebuild Britain, and they came over here because the government was so desperate, we invited them over, we just had such a, low, such a lack of workers and laborers to be able to rebuild Britain. And if you'd like, There's not enough time to go through why each one of those is obviously wrong. Well, yes. And, and if so you obviously. do have time, you can go onto the website and read Simon Webb's recent article talking about the myth of Caribbeans helping to rebuild post war Britain. And I just got a highlighted quote here from the article, which says it all really. In 1955, worried about soaring unemployment, the government of Barbados contacted London Transport and asked them to come to the island to recruit staff. So keen was the government of Barbados to send their unemployed citizens to another country that they even offered to pay the fares of those taking jobs with London Transport. Know that that's about 10 years after the end of the Second World War. Well, everyone still lived in rubble. Yes, that's exactly how my grandparents described it. They said, you know, we lived in a box under a broken archway. Still living in the tube. Yes, it was like, still coming. It was like the four Yorkshiremen sketch from Monty Python, except far worse. I have always had that question, though, because you get this claim of, like, you know, such and such group rebuilt Britain. I'm like, okay, so what year exactly was Britain rebuilt? Was it 1949? Mm. 1952? Well, like, at what point was we Britain too, rebuilt? Because we then, busy. beyond there, how much rebuilding were you doing in 1965? I mean, you know, for 19, yeah. the, the latter half of 45, all of 46 and 47, right up until Windrush pulled in, we were just too busy celebrating the victory to get around to rebuilding anything. Just twerking in the streets. Well, to be fair, and then the there Caribbean is... showed yeah. up. And to be fair, went, there is a massive population You've got to get yourselves in action here. <laughs> yeah. You're living in rubble, man. What's going on? And we went, oh, you're right. I'm so sorry. We should probably break out the bricks and mortar. Hadn't occurred. Try running for the late party? Or... Uh, well, you know, they can always get in touch if they're interested. <laughs> All right. Dan, oh, you... yes. Yes. Oh, uh... You, no, you were about to say something, Dan. Oh, are we not starting my say? Uh, I no, didn't I didn't know. I didn't know if that was a segue or was no, that was an invitation to say something witty. That, that wasn't a segment. Well, I can't I, now. Oh, well, okay. Well, <laughs> there you go. In that case, let's let's carry on. You get all of the articles and newspapers all talking about it all at the same time, saying that we need to celebrate. Interestingly enough, with this one, this is the the Independent. This is the only one that surprised me by not trying to rewrite British or European history and not trying to just complain constantly about how terrible everything has been for black people all the time ever. This one ignored that they're celebrating Diane Abbott for a moment. Oh, Jesus. They're Is all, there anyone who needs to be tag feared from the black race? They're all, I think everyone would agree. <laughs> they're all celebrating Diane Abbott. I'm sorry to break this to you. But this one actually... Uh, activist. But this one actually does show that uh, there are black people in Britain doing things. Amazing. That aren't just complaining about white people. Well, why'd they pick Diane Abbott? Well, that's an out <laughs> she's an outlier. Okay. <laughs> but they talk about people like uh, this guy, Ashley Walters, King Kano Robinson, a uh, stellar cast of actors shown in the final season of Top Boy on Netflix. I've not watched that, but Rory has and told me it's actually a very good television show. Yeah, I watched that. That's quite me. good, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, so yeah. this one actually does do a celebration of not even just going back into history, but saying, hey, look, there are people doing interesting and creative things right now. To be fair, Top Boy is all about black crime. Well, write what you know. Um, yes. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, it's, there's an actual sense of celebration about this. But then you just yeah. go to, this was the Black History Month 
website where they were doing a big celebration of the whole thing, uh, saluting our sisters, because a lot of this ends up just turning into uh, Black Women's History Month. Oh. Where it's just, the, the whole thing is just like, the only, not only are black people the only people who've achieved anything in history, it's also all black women. So, it, yeah, I, I know this is the end result of any left-wing thought at this point. It's got to go intersectional. Yeah, it's going to be terrible. Black they trans did do the space program, so... And, and all, all of these are just, here's various activists. Here's just a constant deluge of activists who did this and that. And you've got opinion pieces like this one talking about why we have Black uh, History Month and the benefits of it brings, which is where this particular gentleman, Patrick Graham, just complains that in the 1970s, his historical education in a British school featured only British people. Big surprise. What, what is he complaining about exactly? Then? I know. And he, he says that he learned more from the television show Roots than he did school, at which point I have to break it to you. I'm sorry, Patrick, you didn't oh, learn anything because Roots... Yeah, Roots is complete fiction. <laughs> yes, Roots is a historical television show that is not accurate whatsoever. Shockingly enough, people in the 1800s and 1700s who would have died of disease if they went further into mainland Africa weren't just bum-rushing people in their homes and enslaving them. No, it was... War, intertribal warfare, people on the West African coast capturing other tribesmen and then selling them off to traders. And also on the East Coast, selling them off to Arabs. That's, that's what it so, was. So hang on, I, I, I haven't seen Roots. So that is... There's the scene where they uh, depict the slave trade and how it happened is the right. evil white devil. He would turn up with, um, well, these big nets and right. he would catch a man like you'd catch a fish or a bear in the net. And then we right. drag them back to the shores in which we then shove them on our boats and disappear like the pirates we were. And Always. nobody dies of malaria. <laughs> so so no. to be fair, that is... That's, that's is, not what happened. That's, that's not what is, happened. That, that's more or less what the Barbary pirates did, but that was the other way around. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, they turned yeah. up with like, knives and guns instead of a, a net, because who uses a net? Like, what's, what's wrong with you? But, yes. you know, we would just buy slaves off the Black King who had the slaves. Yes. Because, you know, it's easy to just give him money. Well, you say we. I mean... The British didn't typically, but uh, well, we did for a number of years. Yeah, well, these, we ended, but, but the vast majority went to um, uh, Arabia. Yeah, and Portugal as well. Yes. Good boys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, then there was this other thing that I found at the same time. This was announced on the first of October, where, which is of course the beginning of Black Grievance Month, talking about how the Nottinghamshire police are training officers, staff, and new starters in black history. And this is all coming off of the back of the Police Race Action Plan, which, of course, is something that England desperately needed after the murder of George Floyd. I looked through the documents that they released regarding that, which, um, uh, which explicitly states that in the very first sentence of the document, that it's George Floyd died and we needed to take a look at policing in, in the UK. It happened in the US. We've already covered George Floyd a number of times, so we don't need to get into the actual circumstances of that. But I decided to take a look at the National Police Chiefs Council's webpage and look at the document itself. And they say in here, and I've not got the, uh, the link on here, uh, it says, we are committed to zero tolerance racism and policing. They will adopt an explain and or reform approach to redress the negative impact and outcomes experienced by black people. And we are responsible for making sure that black people feel not underprotected, but at the same time, not over-policed. Which is a complete right. clown show balancing act to try and do those two things at the same time. We want to pr uh, protect people, but also Police. at the same time, but not be there to protect them. Because of course, if you look into the right. statistics in crime in the UK, similarly with, black, uh, with uh, black America, black crime within the UK disproportionately is against other black people yes, black, within the UK. It's black on black, yeah. Yes. So if you want to right. protect them, you are going to need to police those areas. That's always the contradiction. Right. And it had this incredible line because they, they, they did all the same things, which is basically they're just going to create an advisory group so they can give money and jobs to their activist friends for the College of Policing. They're going to start reporting annual ethnicity pay gaps, and it includes this amazing line in this document saying, we understand that uh, the disproportionate use of police powers is a problem in and of itself, regardless of the reasons for those racial disparities. 
reg- yeah. regardless. So it could be completely just What's the point in doing a study. Yes. I don't care about the reason, but here's my study. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but it's good to know that what's going to help people prevent crime this Black History Month is going to be that the Nottinghamshire police are going to be told about Mary Seacole. Right. Fantastic. This is, as, as I pointed out with HS2, the question you should ask whenever you see initiatives being put forward like this is, how will this help X? You ask the Stone Toss comic question, how will this help sell burgers? How will this help build a train track? How will this help prevent crime? The answer is not forthcoming. It's just, but we're doing this. We're, we're doing this, though. You can get our podcast live in full, uncensored, and for free from 1 o'clock UK time every weekday. And while you're there, for as little as £5 a month, you can access all of our paywalled premium content, such as Josh's eclectic series, Contemplations, where in this episode, he discusses the origins of the English language in a two-part series. If you want to know the rest of what Josh is putting out, you can follow Josh on Twitter at at Josh Firm, and the rest of us over at at LotusEaters underscore com. Until next time, goodbye.